The following program is sponsored by the Greek, Ely's Radio Shack dealer at 570 Altman in downtown Ely, and brought to you as a public service by Georgetown Media in Ely, Nevada. White Pine County Commission meeting, May 27, 2020. Okay, we will open the meeting. And the uh, first thing on the agenda is public comment. Is there any public comment out there today on the phone line? Uh, no, sir, not as of now. Okay. Anyone out there want to speak in public comment right now if it's on the phone that maybe hasn't uh, punched in? If not, we're gonna, we have one member in the audience. And uh, before we close, we'll ask on the phone one more time. So George would like to speak. There's yes, sir. on the phone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, at the last regional planning uh, meeting held on May 20th, 2020, I was not allowed to attend the meeting. At times there were 11 to 15 people in the room regarding the first agenda item. There were five, five same family members physically in attendance, two of which sat on the planning commission. They did not participate in any conflict that I know of, nor did they move away from the table, nor did they step out. Today, they stated I had to move out of the room. I stated I was media and I wanted to film the meeting. He asked if I had any credentials. I set up my camera and left the room, stating the, uh, that there were five family, same family members present regarding item A. The deputy DA stated I could attend the meeting by phone. I asked him, Where's the, where's the phone? And he left. I stood in the doorway to try to hear what was uh, being said, and the chairman, John Jarkalis, told me to shut the door because the board couldn't hear the phone, uh, the people on the phone. Mr. Jarkalis failed to turn uh, up the volume on the Zoom. He did not set up the speaker system, stating that we're working on it. How long you have that system? Mr. Chairman, those that can't do the job have got to go, and he needs to go. He's been on there a long time. You know what the rules are. To date, the board has failed to address code violations by members of the Planning Commission, past and present, as well as members of the County Commission, Ely City Council. They need to comply with codes that they have formulated and adopted or resigned. The county and the city cannot selectively continue discriminating and enforcing the law. Let me remind you, I'm not applying for a federal loan. You are. I can't get a building permit to re-roof my property, yet the community choir just finished putting up plastic unapproved roofing on a commercial building. No permits, no contractor, no inspections, no reports. 
Did the building inspector ever make it back from Eureka and his wife in the city county vehicle that I reported to you back in September of 2019? I've not heard anything yet. Mr. Chairman, uh, Pete Carson continues to keep horses within the city limits as in violation of city and NRS codes. There are times he brings in donkeys and cattle. Why do you allow the Regional Planning Commission and your building inspector selectively enforce the law and discriminate? The animal control officer has failed to date to date to issue any citations. I look at his reports. I think that's selective. Mr. Chairman, uh, Pete Carson has put wanted homes in the trailer park that's not allowed by code. I can't put a wanted home on one of my lots, which is considerably wire, wider than a Carson trailer spot, and I'm within the parameters. He is not in compliance and is violation of the trailer ordinance. I lost two tenants that was issued citations for so-called code violations, 355 potential fines. Why the discrimination? Where's your building inspector? We need to stop the discrimination. And I want some answers, Mr. Chairman. I don't want to hear, uh, your time is up. Your time is up. I'm I want some answers. I'm trying to adhere to the three minutes. And so am I. Okay, well, thank you, Joey. Is there anyone on the phone? No, sir. I'll ask one more time. Anyone on the phone that would like to speak? Any public comment? You're more than welcome. Please do. Please punch in. I'll wait five seconds, and then I'm going to go ahead and open the meeting. Hearing and seeing no more public comment, we are going to go to open the meeting on page two. Item one, notice of untimed items at 9 a.m. Uh, okay, now we will recess the regular county commission and open the 9 a.m. special fire commission meeting. Would you ask Brett to come in, please? Point Brett's in the building, and we are going to uh, open the special fire commission meeting with public comment. Is there any public comment on the phone out there? Uh, what we're about to talk about here in the fire department, the fire district meeting? I just received information that Zoom has crashed for participants outside. That's right. Was it crashing? Was it crashed? You know, it's it's crashed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So if you raise your hand, they have to raise their hand. Yeah, they have to raise their hand to participate in the meeting. So that way we don't have any outbursts. If, that way I can move them. If they lost connection, they have something to do with their internet mm -hmm. service. So then you I still, still notify him of our meeting crash. It was Burton. Burton was pretty sad with that stuff. He said he wanted to go through. So send him a message. He sends us back. Oh, he's back? Ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Should I go back to the public comments? <laughs> <laughs> We're in public comment uh, on the special fire commission meeting. So if there's anyone out there that would like to speak in public comment, please uh, take advantage of this right now. You're welcome. Anyone? Again, I'll give five seconds and see if you can punch in. Hearing none, seeing none, we'll move on to the meeting. You got George. I got George? Got George, come on in, George. So if you step out uh, while George does public comment. Inspector ingress, ingress, egress at the corner of Avenue D and Altman, I, uh, Highway 93, near the new Holiday Inn. It appears the access is much too narrow to allow an emergency vehicle to access, let alone a large fire truck or a large ladder truck. The Holiday Inn is a three story structure. You're not going to just get a uh, little pumper going in there. The city has failed miserably to address the issue. I've told them more than one time. With combined agencies, maybe we can eliminate unneeded overstaffing and address real fire and safety issues. There's no proper ADA access along uh, side the side of camp junkyard. The curb should have been installed back another six feet to allow for a wider road. It's been narrowed much too uh, narrow. Doesn't meet minimum code. The county and the city needs to hire engineers and inspectors who know what they're doing and abide by codes that have been adopted. We've got a problem there. That the second gutter should have been five feet from the fence line, not 11 feet. That problem needs to be addressed. A 
top of the state, the top of the city, and I'm talking to you folks. That needs to be addressed before something stupid happens. And if something stupid happens, you're liable as far as I'm concerned. You know what the issue is, you know what the problems are, and yet we're looking the other way, and that needs to stop. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. And Joe, you can probably comment on the phone. We are still in public comment. If you want, I don't know whether it's crash or if you have to raise your hand. If you have to raise your hand and you're out there, please do. And seeing none, we are just going to go on into the meeting. It's on page two. Item, well, here's Brad. So, item one is discussion for possible action the approval of the FY 2021 White Pine County Fire Protection Budget Interlocal Agreement. Calculated amount, Elizabeth Francis, Director, and Brett North, Fire Chief. Elizabeth and Brett. Thank you. Um, the backup is uh, in your packet, and so I included a copy of the uh, agreement. And having applied the formula to the um, the contract, the amount for next year will be $57,275, broken out uh, for $18,483 for finance, $889 for human resources, $17,861 for information technology, $8,082 for district attorney, and $11,957 for um, maintenance services. And I would ask for your approval for that uh, calculated amount based on the contract that just follows the formula. And then my three minutes are up. <laughs> I don't think you have yet more than three minutes. Does any commissioner have any questions on what we've seen here and what the, what was the uh, dollar amount from the the total dollar amount is $57,275. Okay. What was the amount last year, Elizabeth? The amount last year was taken out of the budget, um, but the amount in the prior year, hang on a second, and I will get to that number, and was higher. And I apologize, higher. I just, I wasn't, I wasn't part of this, and right. I really should have called you ahead of time, but I was oh. reading a lot of, and there was a lot to read in this uh, agenda. Yes, there was definitely that, but um, this amount has come down. Uh, part of the reason that the amount has come down is because the, the number, of employees. number of employees has gone down. Uh, some of it has gone up because the budget has gone up uh, because of um, the different things that have been put in. Um, but let me just take a quick look at that and I'll get to last year's number. And the ability to pay suppliers, the fire district? Um, so to speak, I mean, well, there has is been some factor. Well, no, because part of what you did when you uh, hired Brett as your emergency manager, if you remember, that splits his wages out between fire, EMS, general fund, and grants. Right. So his wages went down. So yes, he, we are able to accommodate this based on those changes to wages and benefits and the allocation that happened because of that change in his status from one position to another. Um, but, yeah, for sure. I just, I just want to be able to have our different departments like road, you know, fire district be able to um, afford those agreements and yes. have balanced and that's always that's always an ongoing issue um, for the um, different special revenue funds, and we always do a central services allocation. We do the interlocal agreement because the fire district is actually a separate legal entity. Um, and Brett, you're new to this. Did you have any questions? The fire is no. She explained it to me the other day. It made perfect sense. So we do break it out between the two aspects. We bring it, break it out between fire and EMS. So there's two different numbers. And so if I look back historically, um, I want to say it was 67, and I'm sorry, I'm not finding that number real easily. And I apologize for that. That's okay. I was just more concerned on, on uh, being sure that it's not a hard 
reduction? No, it will work because of the change in the position and the allocation of that. Hey, is, yeah. Yeah. Any other commissioners have a question on this particular subject with the fire? Uh, thank if you not, for the board's indulgence. Yeah. If not, we will uh, look for a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion by Maury. Second. Second by Shane. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. As unanimous. Item two. Item two is discussion possible action the approval of resolution 2020-30 to enter into an interlocal agreement with Nye County for fire EMS mutual aid pursuant to chapter 277 of the Nevada Revised Statutes, the DA's office, and Brett North as, as fire chief. So Mike, would you give us an update here? So, um, where's Brett? Come on up. This has to do with the ambulance that we sent down there. And we just need to have those uh, agreements in place for Knight County's legal side of it to allow our county volunteers to run in Knight County, even though we always do and always have. And having our ambulance actually stationed down there in Duck, Duck Water, um, is it their fire chief required that one of you would see this in place right now? That was yeah, it was the Duck Water County. Duck Water. Yeah. One of the, the mutual agreements? Well, and the fire chief too, yeah. But the, Tribe was the one that really wanted it. So, um, Brian, we're working on this with, with Fred as well. And we just want to have, if you have any questions, we can answer that. Any questions by anybody on this agreement with Duck, with Duck Water? Anybody? Okay, then hearing none, uh, unless after listening to Mike, I'll uh, ask for a motion to approve. I, I do have a quick question. Okay. Did we need to put anything in here with Duck Water at all? So, uh, they should have. A separate Remote. one, probably, or unless we're all three signers to it, you know, and uh, we can talk to them about that. This is what Nye County wanted to see first. Mm -hmm. Duck water is more than, and they're the ones that are getting all the assistance. So right, that's why we I can we can put one together with them. Um, but isn't it going to be housed? Well, we did with that agreement. With the so agreement. agreement, yeah, yeah, we might want to think about adding it. I'll talk with Brian about that. Also, um, I should be like, we should have some of these in place with all our surrounding counties, agencies, and... They probably need to be updated, because I know in the past that we used to... Yeah, their own fire chief used to have a drawer with all the mutual agreements with every agency, federal, state, local, whatever. And so you'll see a lot of these over the next six months that you're working with. Okay, after that explanation, and a little bit of discussion, uh, I'll ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Motion by Ian. Second. Second by Lori. Any further questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. That's unanimous. Item three, discussion for possible action. The approval of an interlocal agreement with Nye County for fire slash EMS mutual aid. Again, the DA's office in Brent. This is, this is the same thing. The one is the resolution and this is the actual agreement. And duck water is separate. Thank you. Motion to approve. Motion by Second. Two seconds. And motion by Lori and a second by uh, Travis. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Pass unanimous. Okay. Uh, now we're at, uh, we are at the 915 public hearing FY 2021 budget for fire. And uh, item one is public hearing discussion. White Pine County Board of Commissioners will take comments from the public on the tentative budget FY 2020-2021 for the White Pine County Fire Protection District. Uh, do I ask for public comment again? Mm -hmm. yeah. I would uh, like to do an introduction if I may. Okay, but we'll do, we'll do public comment right now. Okay. If you want. Is there any public comment out there? Ask George if he's got any public comment on the, on the budget. Uh, public, public, public hearing. Okay. Yeah. Public public hearing. Yeah. If there's an introduction, it might give the, the public information. And what if they have questions about Yeah, you can hear from the public at any time. Okay. Uh, do I have anybody on the phone, uh, Mike? Is anybody on the phone out there? I don't know if you've got to raise your hand or whatever to let us know you want to speak. You're welcome to. And. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, let, uh, and do an introduction uh, by the finance director. So I'm going to allow Elizabeth to do the introduction right now on the uh, fire commission. So go ahead, Elizabeth. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and come up because the people on the phone need to be able to hear me. Uh, pursuant to NRS, under the 
public hearing, I have to disclose the differences between the tentative budget that was approved in April and what you are adopting as the final budget. So there are several changes that have occurred. On the revenue side, we have decreased the intergovernmental uh, support to the fire district from your EMS um, special revenue fund. And this is so that what you go ahead and you transfer over is equal to the projected revenues in that fund. So those have been reduced to reflect what projected revenues are. We did go ahead and decrease uh, salaries and wages. As I explained under the earlier item, we went ahead and we broke out um, Brett North's um, wages between not just fire and EMS now, but between fire and EMS, emergency management in the general fund, and the emergency management federal grants. So you see a reduction to salaries and wages and related benefits. And then we have the increase um, for both on both the fire and the EMS side for um, the interlocal agreement that you just approved the amount on. And uh, so the overall change to the budget um, is, is going to uh, bring your ending fund balance for the fund at the end of the fiscal year to 1066000 That $1 million is your reserve for um, catastrophic loss, so you're down to 66000 um, That was better than our initial projections uh, were when we started the process. Um, so moving things around kind of helped that out a little bit. Um, so are there any questions on that? That's the disclosure and introduction I needed to make. Okay. You may got a question of Elizabeth, finance director on this? This is a public hearing, so we are allowing public comment on this. Is there anybody out there that wants to speak publicly? No, sir. Okay. Does George want to speak? No. I want to make him that opportunity. He's good. So this, that was just a discussion item on the, uh, if no other commissioner has anything to add, we're going to move on to item two. Item two will be the discussion for possible action. The approval of the 2020-2021 White Pine County Fire Protection District final budget as outlined during the public hearing by Elizabeth Francis. Has anybody got anything to add or they would like to do? If not, we'll look for a motion to approve the final budget. Move to approve. Motion by Travis. Second. Second by Ian. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passed unanimous. We are now at the end of the Special Fire Commission meeting. And we are at back in public comment. Is there any public comment up on the phone? No, sir. Seeing none, no one in the building. So we are going to. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. may I make one just one more comment? Because Please. I know it's important to the fire commissioners to know that this budget did preserve 100% of the capital improvements that were um, requested during the budget process. So that is in here in full. And I just wanted to make sure that that was on the public record and that you knew that didn't get reduced in any way. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The public will be glad to know that. Again, I'll ask one more time for any public comment. Uh, it's open for anybody who wishes to speak. Hearing none, seeing none, no one in the building, so we are going to move on and we're going to close the fire commission meeting and go back into the regular county commission meeting on page three. We've got five minutes before we go into the next public hearing, so let's see what we can find. Let's go to uh, on the same page, page three, item, items for elected officials, item 21A. Is Travis Godel on vice chairman? Discussion for possible action, the approval to send a letter to Tesla asking that they consider White Pine County for any operations as they plan to leave California or either Nevada or Texas. Travis. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, this is Brian Pyle's ID and I liked it. I figured for a couple bucks and thanks to send it. Why not? Tell them if they want to start a company town Well, okay. That's uh, right. Yeah, so. Letters in the back of if anyone has any changes or anything. Uh, Thank you, Brian. That was a good idea. It doesn't have to be cars. He can build boring machines, rockets. Really. Whatever, <laughs> we'll take whatever, whatever he yeah. wants to bring us. Okay. 
Any other discussion on this? And uh, all for a motion to approve the letter. Motion to approve. Motion by second by Shane. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Are you going to send that to the three? That's it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, great. Okay, well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, Scott, are you on the phone? Yeah. Let me find him. We're going to go to page four, item B1. Scott, I'm going to read this and you're up. It's uh, I, item 1A, discussion for possible action, approval of grant application being made by Scott Henry, Tabitha Hamilton, to the Office of the Attorney General for funding of active shooter and mass casualty protective, protective equipment to be stationed at the White Pine County Sheriff's Office to serve the surrounding areas in the amount not to exceed $12,350 with the required county match of zero. Scott? Yep, thank you, Commissioner. Um, first, I'd like to thank Tabitha for assisting me in writing this grant. Um, it's a grant that did bring some well-needed equipment to the Sheriff's Office, so I'm just looking for your approval to uh, move forward with the grant. Thank you. Anybody got any questions of Scott and the grant? If not, I'll look for a motion to approve the grant. Move to approve. Motion by Ian. Second. Second by Shane. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. We're going to do item B. Item B is discussion for possible action to approve the White Pine County Sheriff's Office, White Pine County Commission, to award the bid to the highest bidder for the sale of the 2004 Harvey Davis. We have several uh, uh, bids, so I'm going to ask Nicole to give them to each one of us, and if there's extra, give one to Nicole or, and, and or not, excuse me, to my own people and also to uh, uh, Elizabeth. So everybody will have one envelope wow. to open. And I'll just start with Shane and work around and see what the company and what the bid is. And then we'll move to Mike. Thank you. Mike. Thank you. You're welcome. I had better not open those. Give one to Mike over there. Give one to Mike. To George. Okay. Okay. George, you got an extra winner. Winner. Give one to George. Give one to George? Yep. No. You, know, you, take, you can take it. I'll take it. Okay. So each person open and Shane. We'll start with you. We'll go to Lori, go around that way, and uh, we'll see what the company name is and what the amount is. So, is there so, a date and time stamp on those things? There are. There are. Every one of them. Every one of them. Okay. Anyway, Shane, you got the first deal. Yes, the one I have was filed on May 26th at 4.28 p.m. for Eric Boardman in the amount of $2,501. Oh. Okay. And my bid... Uh, do you want us to say what was filed? 417, May 26th. This bid is in the amount of $2,002. And if, are we supposed to say what's from? Yes. From, from Bethany, the home? How do you say your last name? I think it's a little bit. I'm not sure. Okay. And what was the bid? 2002. Okay. I have the third one, and it's uh, postmarked. Uh, mine is uh, May 26th. Holtus, and his bid is $2,225. So I have another bid from the same gentleman, Eric Boardman. This one was filed 26 at 2.04 p.m. for $2,101. You said to jack it up. Yeah, I can jack it up later. Who did it against himself? Okay, Nicole, uh, uh, I've got the, uh, the uh, a bid from Jeremy Mangum. Was uh, filed at on May 26th at 1:58 p.m. for $1,505. Okay. And I have a bid from Tommy Dick in the amount of $1,675 that was filed May 26th at 1:40 p.m. Okay. Can you give me the amount one more time? $1,675. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I've got one from Cody Crossetti, bidding $2,550. Okay. And I have one from Mary Davis on May 26th for $1,900. That's it? That's all of them? Okay. Uh, looking at them, it looks to me like the highest bidder was Cody. Yep. $2,550. Um, 